the moon. Breeze at dawn whispers its secret. Don't go back to sleep. You must know what you really want. Don't go back to sleep. So, so for the past couple weeks, we've been getting drunk on harmonies sung by solo artists that actually sound like a choir. Jerry Rafferty, David Crosby, Joni Mitchell, Gordon Lightfoot, Dan Fogelberg, James Taylor, even yours truly. So please go back and watch those videos if you haven't, because they're really, they're the prerequisites to what we're going to do today. Now in those videos, we discovered how they get that choir sound, and this week you're going to learn how to do it yourself. This is how to build a choir by multi-tracking your own voice. Stick around. Alright, quick review of the basics. To build layered harmonies, you record yourself singing a song, usually the lead part or melody first, and then while listening to what you already sang, you sing along with yourself. And you do that multiple times, layering the recordings or tracks until you've recorded anywhere from 6 to 12 of you. That's really however many voices you decide are enough to get the particular chorus or choir-like sound you want. Now, for an individual singer like you to create thick harmonies, you're going to need to develop two main skills. One is to be able to identify good sounding harmony parts, and the other is to sing those harmonies without straying back to the main melody or to another harmony. So if you can just do those two things, you can create a choir from your own voice. So. I've been doing this for literally decades. It's one of my absolute favorite recording techniques. And at this point, I've recorded quite a few solo choir type songs. Last week, we opened up the master tracks for 10,000 Flowers from my 1995 album, Get This. Uh, that album actually contains a fair number of solo choir songs, including the opening track. That's a minute-long original song set to a poem by the 12th century Sufi poet named Rumi. The song is called Don't Go Back to Sleep. The breeze at dawn whispers its secret Don't go back to sleep You must know what you really want Don't go back to sleep so are moving back and forth through the doorway. Don't go back to sleep. The two touch. The door don't is wide open. Don't go back to sleep. The door is wide open. Now that choir is 10 voices, three times three harmony vocals, plus the lead vocal. So total of 10 parts. Now, if you've never sung overdubbed harmonies before, there are plenty of pitfalls that can kind of mess up your results. So I'm gonna give you some tips to keep you out of trouble along the way. So let's start with the harmony arrangement. What should the harmonies sing and when? So the secret here is to listen to other artists whose harmony choirs you love. You're gonna notice they're selective about when the harmony parts come in to support the development of the song and the arrangement. See, if you sing wall-to-wall -wall harmonies all the way through, they're gonna lose impact, especially if they just parallel the melody. Now, if you want to, you can record yourself singing harmonies all the way through the song. But just know from the start that you're probably going to mute the harmonies on certain verses, pre-choruses, whatever. Because the best harmony arrangements are always going to let a song breathe. They're going to rise and fall, they're going to enter and exit, just to keep your listeners engaged. And one easy way to build the impact of a harmony arrangement is to raise the harmony's pitch over the course of the song. So, for example, you might sing the song's first chorus, keeping the pitch of the harmony parts below the melody. And then maybe on the second chorus, you're going to put 
one harmony above the melody and one below. And then maybe on the final chorus, both harmony parts are going to be above the melody. So that's a natural way to build drama and, and intensity. Okay, so last question. How many harmony voices do you really need to sound like a choir? So in my experience, three voices singing each part is perfect. So that means nine voices for three-part harmony or 12 voices for four-part harmony. All right, let's build a choir. We're going to start with basic instrumental tracks. You need simple instrumental and rhythm tracks as a foundation. So usually that's going to be either guitar and or keyboards with just a simple rhythmic beat. So these basic tracks are going to be the harmonic and rhythmic reference for all the vocals you're going to record. So they need to be carefully tuned with a steady rhythmic feel. You want very clear pitches and consistent rhythm to sing over because your harmonies are only going to be as good as the foundation you build them on. Quick note, I sometimes wait to add a bass part or I keep it very low in the mix while I'm singing harmonies because bass frequencies build up fast and they can prevent you from hearing the subtleties of your own voice's pitch. It's especially true for men, baritones like me. The importance of monitoring. Now, when you're overdubbing vocals, you always need to listen to or monitor tracks you've already recorded while you're singing new parts. So, you need a good pair of headphones, preferably closed ear or in-ear monitors like these guys, so the sound from your headphones doesn't leak into the mic. Now, I'm going to put some reasonably priced headphone recommendations in the description. Hopefully that'll help you out. Now, always take the time to set up your headphone monitoring carefully, because the mix you're listening to while singing is going to be super important. The instruments need to be easy to hear so you can stay on pitch and in rhythm, but your voice needs to take center stage. It's got to be even easier to hear. So I always monitor in stereo and I pan the instruments and voices apart to separate them. So my suggestion is to put all the instruments, guitar, keyboards, drums, anything you got somewhere to the left or the right and put the voice you're recording right now directly in the middle. Now, once other voices are recorded, pan them out to the sides too, because that way you can really focus on your current part because it's always in the center. And that's going to help you hold pitch and rhythm more accurately. So again, just make sure you can hear both the instruments and the voice part you're currently recording clearly. Building tracks, guide vocal. Now your first vocal track should just be a lead part singing the melody. This is going to be your guide vocal. It's the track you're going to use to guide you as you build all your harmony parts. And here's the thing. When you record a guide vocal, you're not even trying to record a final take. There's just no reason to obsess because you're going to replace it and record a final lead vocal later. So just focus on singing in accurate pitch and rhythm rather than with a lot of emotion. I usually sing a guide vocal track a little more quietly than usual so I can just sing the correct pitch of the melody without a lot of inflections. So in other words, I sing a lead guide vocal part as if it's a background part. Building tracks, harmony number one. All right, you've recorded your guide vocal, and now it's time to arm a new track and add your first harmony part. So the most obvious harmony part is usually going to parallel the melody a third above, right? So you got the melody and the third above. Now let's talk about diction and timing. Because remember, you're going to be layering between 6 and 12 of yourself to get a choir effect. So you need to really be careful to sing those parts consistently and especially pay attention to when you sing the consonants and cutoffs of each phrase. Because if you're not careful, you're going to end up with cascading consonants, you know, or s -s -s -s. And they're going to sound amateur and they'll be really distracting to your listeners. Building tracks, harmony number two. Now, depending on where the melody is centered in the tonal range of the song, your second harmony part might be above the other two which would mean you have harmonies a third and a fifth above the main melody, or you might find the second harmony should sit below the main melody. So let me think of an example here. Let's say you're singing the chorus to Lean On Me by Bill Withers. We all need somebody to lean on, right? That chord is going to be a simple major one, three, five. We all need, melodies on the third, one, three, five. You could sing one harmony above. We all need somebody, right? That's on the fifth. 
And you could do one below. We all need somebody. That's on the root of the chord. Or you could sing both. Ab My dog's going to sing harmony. Or you could sing both above the melody on the fifth and a higher octave of the root. We all need somebody. We all need somebody. Right? Whatever you choose, just rehearse the part until you know exactly what you want to sing and then record your first pass at the second harmony until you're happy with it. And then remember that with each harmony part, you're going to need to sing it again one or two more times, almost identically, to get that choir effect you want. I should probably mention there are artificial ways to accomplish this. You could record a harmony part and then duplicate it to a new track and then detune the duplicate slightly just a few cents in either direction. You could shift its timing forward or back a few milliseconds, and that's basically what a chorus effect does. There are also some plugins like ADT plugins, automatic or artificial double tracking, and those are gonna vary pitch and timing over time and vary them. So I've tried them and they're definitely cool. I never quite like the sound of those clones, the artificial clones, as much as just taking the time to sing each part two or three times monitoring again. So remember, every time you're ready to record a new harmony part, you got to take the time to adjust your monitor mix. And it can be really helpful to turn down the relative volume of all the previously recorded voices. Because the goal is always to hear the part you're currently singing the most clearly, but still hear enough of those other melody and harmony parts that you're going to get the pitch and the rhythm right with each successive take. You just got to get those consonants and phrase endings in the same place every time. Now, occasionally, I even mute the duplicates of the part I'm currently singing so I can make sure I lock in my current vocal take with the other parts. Building tracks, harmony number three. Now, you may or may not have a melody plus three harmony parts until later in the song, if ever. But if you do, all the same rules apply. Your monitor mix becomes more and more important the more vocals you've already recorded lead vocal options. So what about doubling the lead vocal on your choruses? I say try it, because you know, sometimes it sounds best to just have one lead voice and keep it a little louder than all the harmonies, but other times doubling the lead sounds even better, and it can be one more trick to add, you know, a little dramatic intensity as you're building the arrangement. All right, there you go. Now you got the keys to the kingdom to create a single singer choir from multi-tracking your own voice. And here's the thing, today's recording technology makes it surprisingly easy because you can do as many takes as you want. As a final reminder, it almost always sounds great when you have three voices singing each part. So you'll want nine voices for three-part harmony or 12 voices for four-part harmony. If you like this info, please like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell, and then visit guitardiscoveries.com for over a hundred more videos to help you play guitar, sing, record, and sound great doing it. All right, go have some fun recording harmonies and please come back and share your creations. I'd love to hear them. I know the other subscribers would. Thanks so much. See you next time.